international correspondent, Lise Doucet, who's there for us. Uh, Lise, over to you. Yes, uh, day 83 of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And while Ukraine continues to insist this is a war it will win, possibly even by the end of this year, it's also clear that this country is suffering enormously, both in terms of the towns and cities which have been laid to waste, but also in terms of this huge economic impact and social impact in terms of the services that have been disrupted and in some places completely cut off. One of them, of course, is health. And with us here is the director for the World Health Organization for Europe, Dr. Hans Kluge, who's been making a visit here to the field, both visiting some of the places which suffered enormous uh, bombardment during the war. You've been meeting the Ukraine authorities what is their message to you about what they need most at this hour it's kind of to merge the humanitarian assistance with already the longer term recovery I found it amazing the resilience of the people the Ukrainian people the healthcare workers they know that the war is not finished but at the same time to think how do we build a healthier and better future for the people so they're already talking about reconstruction even as this war grinds on Right. So the, the, is that wise? Well, I think it gives hope. I think that's the most important. That's the number one thing that the people need. Yesterday, I was in Chernihiv. I was in at the, the north. Yes. Absolutely. At the same time, and I hit at the border with Belarus, with Russia, very, very hard in the beginning of the the war. Still sporadic shelling. At the same time, I was heartbroken if I heard the stories of the doctors, nurses. I mean, and I saw facility after facility being destroyed, the mental health facility, the tuberculosis clinic, the primary healthcare facility, at the same time, incredibly inspired by the real life stories. The TB doctor who told how to ensure continued TB treatment while literally there was not one window which was not broken. So in the places that you visited, you saw that there are enough Ukrainian doctors, other medical staff still staying in place to provide the kind of must be enormous demands on the health service. Absolutely. The governor was telling that, and very proudly, that not one doctor, not one nurse left. And they did not only stay, they were saving lives while the shelling was there. I mean, true heroism. Of course, you're visiting here at a time when the WHO has just come out of the global pandemic, which must have taken a huge amount of resources and attention. When they ask you for assistance, is the WHO in a position to provide it? Absolutely. From day one, but of course, we also face challenges. I mean, we have been very, very responsive. And I must say, it is in partnership. We have about 100 civil society organizations, volunteers. I met them this afternoon. Incredibly important because they have ways to get help to some of the occupied territories because that's still a challenge. And here, we really would like to repeat the United Nations Secretary General call for humanitarian access to leave no one behind. Can you get access to the Donbass, uh, uh, which are now the focus of most of the fighting? It's a big challenge, absolutely. I will concern Donbass, also Mariupol. In fact, we're pre-positioning uh, vaccines for cholera as well, because water supply, safe drinking water, power supply are basic issues, and without that, we cannot provide health care. So we have to look at partnership. Where's and the pre-positioning? Because if you can't get to Mariupol, you probably cannot get we into are, the city. Right. We are, if let's Donbass, say, it's maybe too dangerous. Decentralizing our footprint. For example, our team was in Zaporizhia, also welcoming and doing the triage nice. of the people who arrive. But definitely it's a challenge by hook and by crook. We have to try to, to get there. And also at the occupied territories to convey the call to the Russian authorities that we can leave no one behind. Do they listen when you make that call? Well, at different levels, we have discussions with uh, all parties to really call that attacks to healthcare facilities is really a breach of international humanitarian law and that we need this humanitarian assistance. And yes, they do listen, but it's clear that there are different realities.